throughout the world, they go by all sorts of names. Street people, hobos, tramps, and vagrants. But officially, they are called the homeless. And they have been around for a very long time. Growing economic and social inequalities have combined to make approximately 500 million people around the world homeless. In Jamaica and in most of the Caribbean, homelessness came into being after slavery was abolished between 1834 and 1838. Under our Poor Relief Act of 1886, the poor relief inspectors of the parishes were required to visit the homeless at least twice per year and report on the assistance the poor were receiving. The act also defined the people in need of help as those destitute of the means of subsistence and those who were mentally and physically unable to work and fend for themselves. I get burned out all long now. Here I am on the golden age home right now. In modern times, the United Nations in 1987 defined homelessness as those persons who not only live on the streets, but also those who do not have access to shelter that meet basic standards. Where well, you live in a community where violence is and two gang in there, and you live in the middle of the border and your earth house get burned down, you don't have no one to help you to build back a house you have to eat the street for it. Like other countries, there are scores of people living on the streets of our urban centers. And with each passing day, places like Kingston, Montego Bay and Spanish Town are registering increasing numbers in their homeless population. We are really down and out and you know the circumstances around here. I think not everybody can really look out for somebody. Some God bless them, you know what I mean? When they came, and they came, they take good care of us, you know. Yeah. At least, some people out there can help themselves, and they try their best to help us, by letting us, we go down like dogs. Most of the people them that out here is they're homeless, you understand? And some of them, you know, people can't finance themselves in, you know, this kind of eating provision or even sleeping provision. You know what I'm saying? Because most times people are to be sleeping out here and stuff like that, you know what I mean? It's only leave to other people now to come and help you. You understand? To get along with your life. You know what I'm saying? Because some people out here, you see them, they don't show their life up, but they just, they just need somebody like these kind of people. We are one Jamaican, one people. Just come on, everyone, get on board, take a day, choose a day, and do what you can do. You can feed 10, 20, no care how much, no care how small it is. We can give. We are a giving country, and we are a people who love each other. So let's just give, and give to the best of our ability. I started with 10 people, and, you know, all of a sudden, it just get more and more and more and more so till we are doing more than 50 now and we are from the Emmanuel Apostolic Church and we do this every Thursday you know when I look and when I see people is eating the food from the bin you know my heart goes out you know, to me, you know, my heart goes out for them and sometimes, you know, I'd like to bring like soap and change their clothes so then uh, that can get them a shower, maybe find somewhere and get them bathed if we could, we could give them a little washing soap and some liquid soap uh, to clean up themselves because, you know, you know, we are all one. Are all of these people homeless? There's some of them that live in their home, but I am, but I am saying they don't have no food. They're hungry also. And, and Willowdean, because right now we have some in Willowdean that are supposed to be taking some food for, and we don't even have no, enough to give those each in. Time we come here, it's, yeah. a, it's increasing. If we come this week and we see 40, by next week it's 45, the other week is Sometimes we don't even have enough food to give them. It's like, it's heart rending at times, you know, to come and you, you'd say, okay, you're catering for 50, you bring 50 food, you say 55, it's just break your heart. What do you think about what they're doing? It's very good, something, because some people are having breakfast in the morning. 
Yeah, Mr. Lever. Yeah. Who are you, Lever? Let's just say. My house burned down, you see? And I, I, I got to food very poor um, to get a house. And, you know, them, half of my house, yes, but one thing, I have to build the foundation first. And then the, the money is fighting me to build the foundation. If I build the foundation, I will get the house. But I, I, no, here it is now. Um, the, 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 the contractor man tell me that I need 10, 10 bag of cement and I need 50 blocks to build the foundation and some dirt. But you see, where the dirt is concerned, I could plant the dirt, but you see, the 10 bag of cement is, is heavy money and the 25 blocks is uh, heavy money. If I get a little help, I would move on. Food for the Poor is a Christian-based charity organization catering to the needs of some 300,000 Jamaicans who have found themselves under the poverty line. The organization operates under strict rules when making decisions on recipients of their aid. We are here today with the staff and our management team and Scotia Bank working together in this partnership to make this event possible. Food for the Poor's mission to rid the world of poverty through material and spiritual donation was in action on the day when Geta Morgan, a single mother of 12, received her completed home. I'm feeling good, very good. And I'm happy because this is a spot where I born and grow. And um, I tell you, we can't explain it. I'm really feeling happy to be here. I couldn't sleep last night because to finally see that Jita is getting a house of her own. I would like to say thanks to the people of Jamaica and Food for the Poor and everybody that um, assists me. We now total is ten thousand eight hundred. Hey guys, we gotta put back some stuff. How about some tomatoes? Oh no, not the tomatoes. We have a lot of these. We can put back the cran water. <laughs> How you will pick up the pieces after a disaster can be an unsettling feeling. Let NEM Insurance help you plan for nature's unexpected rumbling. With our homeowner's insurance and content insurance packages, we have what it takes to give you peace of mind in any catastrophe. NEM is the insurance company that you can trust to protect you and the ones you love. Put us at the center of your disaster preparedness plan. NEM, your security is our best policy. There are two types of homelessness, the visible homeless and the invisible homeless, also known as the hidden or concealed homeless. And it is widely believed that for every one visible homeless person, there are four invisible homeless persons. For this documentary, we have concentrated on the visible homeless, those we see every day. Dr. Wendell Abel from the Psychiatry Department of the University Hospital of the West Indies is an expert on homelessness in Jamaica and he shares his views. The majority of persons on the streets in Jamaica unfortunately are mentally ill. In fact, the statistics indicate that 60% of the homeless population are persons with mental illness and naturally Given that reality, any, any, any person working in mental health, any psychiatrist, is therefore, must therefore confront homelessness in this country. So Why are there so much homeless people on the street? It's really within 
the the sort of numbers that you would exist expect for 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 many countries on a percentage basis um the figures that the number of homeless people vary according to whichever um statistical information you're looking at why is there such a difference in the figures and this is true worldwide i must tell you but um you tend to find that government agencies give more conservative estimates whereas non-government agencies um, and advocate organizations tend to give higher figures. Um, another factor that may be contributing to the, to the variation in the numbers is the methods that people actually use um, to define, firstly, the definition of homelessness, and secondly, the methods that they use in the counts. Okay, okay. And, and so, for example, the data we provide, the definition we give, is that a homeless person is one whose fixed nighttime shelter is the street. So if you, if you come out in the days and you're on the, on the street for, even if you're on the street for the greater part of the day, if you return home at nights, right, then you will not be considered homeless. Even if home is on somebody's veranda or under somebody's cellar, Right? Once it's not on the street, then you're not considered homeless. And another major difference here in our study is that if you're living in a shelter, um, then you're not considered to be homeless. So what you're saying is that the definition of homelessness can vary from country to country. And from organization to organization. For example, in the United States of America, one source estimates the number to be between 200,000 and 500,000, while another estimates it to be between 2.3 and 3.5 million. In the UK, the Charity Poverty Action estimates that there are 60,000 people homeless, while Adam Sampson from Shelter thinks the figure is nearer 500,000. According to Dr. Wendell Abel, the number of visible homeless people on the streets of Jamaica is 1,500. 800 of those are children and 650 are adult males and the remaining are females. But Save Jamaica Fund disagrees. They think the figure is nearer 100,000. Let's look at the towns in Jamaica. Let's yeah. look at Kingston, Montego Bay. Which one has the most homeless? Naturally, your, your capitals, your, the, the, the urban centers where you have the densest populations are going to also have the highest number of homeless persons. And so the reality in Jamaica is that 50% of our homeless population actually are in Kingston, St. Andrew, St. Catherine, right? Montego Bay has about 100 persons who are homeless. I mean, sorry, the parish of St. James. Nobody no come up and warm to you. Yeah, my sister, they all in America, she no come back yet. Our largest group of homeless persons are found in the heart of downtown Kingston, Jamaica's political, financial, and commercial hub. go to any high school or any other school. Sure. I just learn everything we learn is just in the street. I really learn it. To read and write, I learn it in the street. I don't really get any teaching. It is fearful to sleep on the street at night and it is dangerous, but the only way you can be comfortable sleeping on the street and protect one another, we have to come together and unite. Not knowing how you will pick up the pieces after a disaster can be an unsettling feeling. Let NEM Insurance help you plan for nature's unexpected rumbling. With our homeowner's insurance and content insurance packages, we have what it takes to give you peace of mind in any catastrophe. NEM is the insurance company that you can trust to protect you and the ones you love. Put us at the center of your disaster preparedness plan. NEM, your security is our best policy. So how much are we now? Total is 10,800. Hey guys, we gotta put back some stuff. How about some tomatoes? Oh no, not the tomatoes. We have a lot of these. We can put back the cran water. <laughs> Oh, 
How about we not? Told you mom was losing it. So embarrassing. <gasps> what are we do? Wow! Right now we are on we are on King Street facing the facing the courthouse and the, and the post office. With no fixed abode, an old man shares this spot at his business place and daytime residence. I bought out for a time when I was living in Man Town. Four so time, how man. How could you not get no assistance when I finance a little two children, buy two little clothes, pants and shirt. And, and, and feel like they have pants and shirt and sell them. Tell them to people on the road, see me. Uh, yes, see me, see me. For most of the homeless residents of downtown Kingston, the existing shelters provide no options or solutions to their plight. Well, I live well overpopulated. Also, if you go there, come like you're still on the street. Because the treatment there, and when you go there, you're still up there on the floor, and the ground inside the yard, because the damage has been full right up. But by poor relief, that shelter. It is just like on the road because you don't come at that shelter. At the shelter, they give us them produce, they give us them, them, them hand over certain things to give to the poor people and we don't get it. The, the people who work at poor relief, them take the best for themselves and bring home and try to give you the worst. And if you try to talk, they deal with you away and tell you to go through the gate. So, Therefore, and some people don't go there, so some people just stay out here. When it rain or any little thing, no matter what I go on, storm or anything, yeah, we just, we just out here in the street and just praying and hope of why everything's okay. You have a little place where they where they that homeless people can go. You never try to go to them places. Which part? Anywhere we go to the place. Why do you not know go to people place, my youth? Although it's dug on a government place. You know you not go to people place. They just, they just jump on the street. Yes, we do have shelters, right? And in fact, we have an extensive shelter system in Kingston, yeah? Um, quite a number of shelters operated by government, religious organizations, especially the Catholic Church and non-government organizations. Um, there also are also several outreach programs available um, uh, throughout the country. And a number of churches also have outreach projects. Um, I'll agree with you that um, where the limited facilities, well, generally in the country, there are limited public facilities, you know, in terms of bathroom and so on. And if it's if facilities are limited for all of us and they're not going to be adequate to meet the needs of the homeless population. And therein lies a major part of our challenge because an important part of, important part in addressing the homeless issue, right? is that we must provide services for the homeless population, for persons on the street where they are. Um, and when we talk about services, we're talking about um, toilet facilities, we're talking about feeding program, we're talking about programs where they can access clean clothes. Because you're going to find that every city in this world will have homeless persons or most cities are going to have homeless persons right we are never going to be able to get rid of the homeless population right because what feeds into all of that is poverty mental illness and therefore on the other hand lack of services and so on so we're probably never going to be able to meet adequately meet the needs of everybody and therefore some persons are going to end up on the streets and one, there, one of our first strategy, therefore, must be to do what we call a spurious reduction, which is provide them with these services, the food, clothes, toilet facilities, and so on. Because if you have somebody who is well clad and is clean and certainly not rummage, rummaging out of garbage and so on, right, then that person is not going to appear very obvious to us as a homeless person and they will blend in the general population, which is what happens elsewhere. So it's, it's, it's a lack of services and the fact that a lot of our homeless persons are not adequate, they're not clean, they appear filthy and they're digging out a garbage and that sort of thing that really, it makes them more visible, you know. Um, the reality is that there's also a fundamental issue that we have to accept is that some persons, um, especially persons who are mentally ill because of the very nature of the illness, actually um, gravitate to the streets. And family members will tell you that they have, would have made many attempts to get them 
back to their home and it's very difficult. So in their ill state, um, they have opted to be on the streets as part of the reality. And for some of these persons, it's going to be very difficult to get them um, living in a home environment. I mean, you go to many parks worldwide and you realize that a high concept, I mean, percentage of the people sitting in the park, living in the parks, are really persons who are homeless. Sometimes I beg all two, two hundred dollars and then we get out cook. I have a boil all porridge with wood. You think that you're going to ever come back off of the road again? You're going to go back to the home again and live again? Hmm? Yeah, man, when my sister comes, go with her. I live in Pan Street and I don't have any way to stay. Yeah, I have to beg and buy some food every day. So I live on King Street and I don't have any way to stay. That's why I'm begging. People treat you, how do people treat you? Yeah, them treat me good. You understand? Yeah, them treat me well. You understand? Them treat me good. But I don't have any way to stay. The only way I come off of the roadside, it's better for me. What put you on the roadside? Why you have to really to come to live on the roadside? My house burned down, I don't have any way to stay. My house burned down, and my mother and father die, and I bought no family and give me no house and I come on the road come sleep. Yeah. I meet an accident from me 12 year old and I have a bag in the belly. Yeah, I go to the doctor regular, but I don't have anything to eat, that's why I'm begging. When you go to the doctor, do they know that you are on the street? Do they treat you different from other people? They treat me like I don't treat other people. I take care of my good medication and everything. I get it free to the hospital and get the bag them free. But once my time, I give me money if I go buy some feet on the road. I get money and go up on the road come sleep at night time. I just saw a lady give you a whole kind of money a while ago. Yeah, she gave me 250 a while ago to buy a lunch. And I go and buy something to eat now. So some people really treat you good when yeah, them, them... Them treat me good and I treat them good. I can't walk, you know, but... Some people come say them, rob them. I come say me and rob them and I don't feel good. So my time I have different people them. And I feel a weird time people rob the woman and the old people them. I love all people and women, so... Them treat me good. The young one them, them now treat me good, them bad me up. I want to lick me up and them say, oh, me have all the money and now give them none. And them can't work on me sick. Me, me give away, you know. Give all people you now, oh, me can't give me give. Said we are begging. Yeah, and some of them cuss me, cut me up and every day. Some of them cut me as a wadi, I say some star. If you try to make a living and them cut me, I take my money and I have a ball and nothing more. Police station police tell me, say, let me know who. I don't know who, I don't come from here. They are human as well. The government needs to have a place where you can put them. as because we could be on the road at any time. Our house could have burned down and we don't have anywhere to go. Maybe family members have no space and we have to go on the road and, and sleep and eat and beg. So the government needs to put a place in so you can get food, shelter and clothing just like ourselves. Well, whole pump on the street clean, you know. But when night coming on our way, they are right. In beard and difference. Yeah, so them the man they are right, come like conscious man have in place. Yeah. But some of them really afraid of water and a beard, you know. Yeah man who are all for weeks in a beard. Him, like something wrong with him. Yeah, then some of them you yeah, call that sick. You understand? Something wrong with him in sick. Because you know sense to see down there in can beard. You know place can beard, you know. Yeah, them pan in the town now. We are dealing. They have a place what Place down there, you can't go to bed. Any man go down there, go to bed. Because I don't have me bed and wash. You understand? <laughs> So how much are we now? Total is 10,800. Hey guys, we gotta put back some stuff. How about some tomatoes? Oh no, not the tomatoes. We have a lot of these. Can't put back the cran water. How about we not? Told you mom was losing it. So embarrassing. What are we doing? Wow! Not knowing how you will pick up the pieces after a disaster can be an unsettling feeling. Let NEM Insurance help you plan for nature's unexpected rumbling. With our homeowner's insurance and content insurance packages, we have what it takes to give you peace of mind in any catastrophe. NEM is the insurance company that you can trust to protect you and the ones you love. Put us at the center of your disaster preparedness plan. NEM, your security is our best policy.
Professor Paul Rhodes, a medical doctor, hotelier, and head of the Portland Rehabilitation Center, is deeply concerned with homelessness, its causes, and finding solutions. There are perhaps a thousand or more homeless people, uh, street people, right here in Kingston itself, and I've heard from many sources in Montego Bay that there are many hundreds in Montego Bay. Certainly Kingston and Montego Bay ha have the largest populations. In, if I was to guess, I would say it's several thousand, two, three, four thousand. However, uh, imagine how many tens of thousands, if not more people, are squatting, living in homes that are really not their own, uh, board houses, uh, and if the government would take action and evict these people, uh, how many more tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of Jamaican souls would then be, would then be homeless. As a doctor uh, uh, and as one who, who can only do so much, I'm focusing on the Port Antonio population of about 35 people. These are my flock, these are my patients. And I will tell you that sleeping in the streets is itself a very dangerous thing in Jamaica. And in Port Antonio, we had a gentleman uh, who, who was named Stinky. May he rest in peace, and that's a terrible name, but that is how he's known, and perhaps people viewing this interview will say, I remember him, God bless him. But Stinky was so named because he used to, have, used to wear a very tight belt around his pants, and it dug into his skin, and he had uh, infected sores around his waist, and he would smell. And he didn't have the, the, the mental ability to take care of himself, and people avoided him, so the wounds festered. And one day he was found in a pool of blood with his throat slit in an alley. Let, let, let's just stop there for a minute, because that's something I want to come on to in a minute. But let, let's go back a little bit there. You touched on something um, in, in earlier when you said about the homeless. Who would you describe as homeless? What does the word homeless mean? There are, oops, there are a variety of, of definitions, but I think a working definition is just one who uh, is uh, of unstable, uh, who, who has uh, a housing which is uncertain, uh, unstable, or non-existent. So that someone who might be staying with a relative for a couple of days, uh, and only those couple of days, is homeless. Someone who's sleeping in a vacant uh, garbage truck or bus, and we passed such a man in Kingston yesterday, uh, is homeless and uh, until people actually move out of the shelter because most shelters are temporary into their own apartment they are they are they are homeless uh, the, the vi I'm a visual person the description of a homeless person is you're walking along the street you see someone who who is li is obviously mentally ill they're, they're a very poor hygiene they're laying in the gutter uh, obviously uh, a homeless person they say that between 60 to 70 percent of our homeless population are mentally ill and that deportees, Jamaicans deported from the United States of America and the United Kingdom make up a shocking 10 percent of our homeless population. I run out the contract then and decided to stay a little bit to get what I wanted. Why did they deport you from the U.S.? I would say I didn't commit no crime because I, I, I beat the charges. Many uh, Jamaicans uh, make a good life for themselves in the United States and England and they may get in trouble with the law. During my research for this documentary, I got news that there was a private flight due in at Normal Manly from the UK with 36 deportees on board. The flight was due to arrive at 12 midnight on the 24th of March. As we approached the airport, I spotted the plane and quickly started filming. There was an unsettling feeling about filming the deportees as they exited the airport with all their possessions in hand. It's shocking to know that 10% of them would be homeless within two weeks. Hundreds of deportees, uh, involuntary returnees, the euphemism, will be sent from London, or sent from England, Great Britain, uh, back to Jamaica because they've committed a crime. Well, 
the, as I, un as I uh, understand the program, the British High Commission is working diligently on putting a lot of money into the process of uh, ensuring that these people can be reintegrated into Jamaican society. For the protection and benefit of their own country, uh, they are moving these criminals back to Jamaica, but linking them up with community resources such as ours, if they are from the Portland area, certainly Yvonne's at the Open uh, Arms Drop and Center or, or, or Joy's in Montego Bay at Kumi for, for training, for emotional support, for uh, job placement, for, for shelter, and so forth. Uh, but, but I think there needs to be more of that, and I think the United States government, through its embassy, needs to make more of a financial commitment to help uh, provide uh, uh, re-entry into the Jamaican society, society of people who are, who are deported from the U.S. My understanding is that there's little effort. <laughs> Not knowing how you will pick up the pieces after a disaster can be an unsettling feeling. Let NEM Insurance help you plan for nature's unexpected rumbling. With our homeowner's insurance and content insurance packages, we have what it takes to give you peace of mind in any catastrophe. NEM is the insurance company that you can trust to protect you and the ones you love. Put us at the center of your disaster preparedness plan. NEM, your security is our best policy. So how much are we now? Total is 10800 Hey guys, we gotta put back some stuff. How about some tomatoes? Oh no, not the tomatoes. We have a lot of these. We can put back the cran water. <laughs> How about we not? Told you mom was losing it. So embarrassing. <gasps> what are we doing? Wow! How long you up on the road there now? We just uh, come here with that while I go. Let them say some people, everybody up on the street like that, mad. You are you mad? No. You are you seeing? No. How long have you been living on the street? About get to them there, country water. Eh? Yeah. What's your name? Errol, my name. Errol, how long? Errol, Errol, where are you from? Where are you from 2800 from? King Street. That's where you born? Yeah, that's my born. Montego Bay is a major tourist resort and the city with the second largest homeless population. Here, the mentally ill and drug addicts roam the streets, creating bad images for both visitors and residents alike. Over the years, numerous attempts have been made to rid Mobe's streets of those some refer to as eyesores. And on one occasion, in July 1999, members of the local police, the parish council, and persons unknown gagged and bound some 32 street persons, then transported them to a remote section of St. Elizabeth. Concerns have always been raised about having, about homeless persons, walk in the streets in our resort town, it certainly doesn't present a good image to the visitors. And naturally, the intention was to sanitize the town, to get rid of these homeless people so that the place didn't look unattractive to the visitors. Um, and out of that, an unfortunate decision was taken and the act was carried out. In an effort to clean up our tourist mecca, 32 street persons had their constitutional rights abused. And as a result, some were awarded $20,000 monthly as compensation for the rest of their lives. Our visit to Montego Bay began at the Fisherman's Beach, where an ex-convict with nowhere to call home shared his story. As man, Earl, a long time on the street, good time. Man. 
Right now, we need to have all the toothpaste and the toothbrush. We have a toothbrush and the toothpaste and my clothes. And my clothes are from my back in the back. My shirt and my pants, you know. I mean, I don't know where to live, I don't know where to put it down. Right now, we need to have a place. I don't know where to Everything you put on, you see a man just something come put on side of it, you know. And then try to make war with me, but thing, but thing, but thing, but thing. I need a house so I can live in and you know, a car can drive and some money can spend and eat food. I'm supposed to have a, I get a woman to live with and a you know, woman to live with. You know. I'm, I'm food and feed them now, feed them now, give me no money to live. You know, give me no clothes, you know, give me no food, you know, get no feed, no money at all. So many people come and come buy fish and they don't give me a work. Then my man stop me from getting it. You know, they try to class me the most weird and try to care about that kind of thing. Right now, I'm still hungry in the body. More than one sick people. People in good deal with drugs. Mad people. All of them come at night time. Then they watch me TV till daylight. And then I'll go to the beach. Two down here, so now. Nobody won't come here to interrupt anyone. So all of those things, you know, stay on, you know, out, out. Unless I even send them to go buy something. So it's a place where a lot of homeless people, mad people... Yeah, when they're ready. Some of them come pick up their little weed butt, their cigarette butt, and smoke. Yeah. Leaving the beach, our next stop was at this bus shed on Howard Cook Boulevard. This is an offset from the book. The book is a, is a thing that take you out to the street. Here, another ex-convict, but this time, one who was mentally ill and who loved writing had this to say. So why you why, why flee from Narborough and come here? This may be attracted to the prison, you know. You went to prison? From 1978. How long have you been doing this book? Yes, man. From the left prison, man. Shawin, Oberin, Jabu, Hawin, that's what it says. <laughs> you laugh. Hey, tell me now. Hey, oh. Under the bridge, next door to Catherine Hall, the home of Sumfest, you will find a deportee hangout. This is like on the, on the bank pacer. The, 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 the store place missing. pacer I, and such I like. And she is, is a deportee, huh? have yeah. nowhere yeah. to live. She was deported from Canada? From Canada. Did you commit a crime while you was deported? No, I'm actually not a deportee. I just come back here for early retirement. Early retirement. Yeah, I'm 51 right now. So how long have you been back in Jamaica? Oh, about 10 years. Definitely she would like somewhere to live. Even a little board house. Here, men and women share food, drugs, and other favors. Kumi, the commitment for the upliftment of the mentally ill, began in 1999 after the street people debacle. I am Dr. Pernell Bell. I'm a clinical psychologist here at Kumi. I'm Joy Crooks. I'm the nurse administrator that runs Kumi. Their main aim is to care for the street people of Montego Bay. We started out as a group of concerned citizens and with the parish council and the citizens because of the population of um, homeless persons on the street of Monte Montego Bay and a great portion of them were um, they considered to have mental illness so a year later when we've assessed the situation we opened this facility in 1991 and we started as a committee that's why it's called um, CUMI this stands for the committee for the upliftment of the mentally ill and the rehabilitation center um, services came about to collaborate with the hospital to follow up with follow-up care after these homeless persons were who were mentally ill were admitted to the hospital and rehabilitated and um, and sent back into the community 
for those who didn't have um, mental illness, we also worked at the time with a, a social um, service group to provide meals and luncheon downtown at certain times in the day and invite them here to the rehab center for bathing and changing of clothes, clothing. We've had very good success for um, the ones who were not homeless, who were not mentally ill, just um, homeless. We were able to help them to make um, contacts with family members and they could go back and integrate into the, the setting, in a home setting, or they could get work. And then with working, they were able to, to rent low income housing or we could sign them on to the social programs that are available so they could get some help to help themselves to integrate back into normal life. For the ones who were mentally ill, we were able to work with the hospital, the mental health department, and rehabilitated um, over a thousand clients. 750 of our clients that we have rehabilitated have gone back into the community of has highly functional working independent individuals and still managing their mental illness. Well the challenge is, is um, in terms of fund funding but over the years we have put in place a trust fund that has significantly helped us in carrying out our functions here in helping the homeless individuals as well as the mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> so how much are we now? Total is 10,800. Hey guys, we gotta put back some stuff. How about some tomatoes? Oh no, not the tomatoes. We have a lot of these. We can put back the cran water. How about we not? I told you mom was losing it. So what are we doing? Wow! Not knowing how you will pick up the pieces after a disaster can be an unsettling feeling. Let NEM Insurance help you plan for nature's unexpected rumbling. With our homeowners insurance and content insurance packages, we have what it takes to give you peace of mind in any catastrophe. NEM is the insurance company that you can trust to protect you and the ones you love. Put us at the center of your disaster preparedness plan. NEM, your security is our best policy. Without realizing, many of us are just a few paychecks or salaries away from homelessness. I have a son and a daughter, and I have a little house in Denham Town. We are they try to help me. They have their children, but they try to help me just adult on the street. But as that adult on the street by stretching out my hand, getting something from someone. Someone will give me something still, but not directly coming out to come on the street to move around and you know. But what I give God thanks for. I have two children that they try to help me in the little way they can. What of your parents? What of your family? Then that's what that me. If I'm born on you, you wouldn't take your back, would you go back home? Yeah, but you know, take me somebody in the house to be safe, because you don't have it. Like, you have milk or food now, I saw you don't have it. Do you have your home? No, sir. Where you live? No, sir. You don't live anywhere? No, sir. How long now you don't live anywhere? Since December. In December, what make you don't live anywhere? Yeah, the only way I'm going from, she said she wanted for her people to come from far and I beg them to come. So she begged me to get out of the room. I beg her because she told me too much about you. I didn't know she said it. So I beg her to get out of the room and find that I can't pick up my room for myself. My family, you know, really, you know, all overseas, you know. I've been a mother and my children, you know. And I'm sure I treat me a little bit better, you know, because I can't believe some cash with them, man. It's like we subsidize people are fine and we subsidize not here and not subsidize, you know. So I look like an idiot, you know. So we leave me no money, you know. Because when they do overseas, we take care of them, you know. Because you know, we earn fine dollars. Natural disasters, fire, violence, loss of jobs, mental and physical health can put any of us on the streets. 
who is Danny Germs? Danny Germs are the last thing you see the panel over there. Um, play cricket and football for the West Indies. You know? Play cricket for the West Indies and football you know, for the Anuk Yard. And which are the last thing? Play test cricket, you know. Thing. You know and even the West Indies cricket board, you know, should have done, you know, a little more in order to deal with the situation of, you know, people like me and, you know, Chani and certain people, you know. Yeah, and I'm supposed to look, try to look out for us a little bit more, you know, West Indies cricket board. You know, because we have, I went in there now, Trinidad, we went to the Sir Constantine Award, you know. And even the award money, you know, I haven't gotten it yet, you know. And so I look out for me a little bit better than that, you know. Danny, how did you come by to, to really start uh, in this situation now? I pressure, you know, and, you know, we used to you know, so you used to have some dollars and you know, have no dollars some more and you know, trust people and people let it down. Know, frustrate, you know, so you drive you up on the road and everything. I did have my two foot and see where I reach in a wheelchair, but try I hold up my head and try to live up. What are your suggestions? How can you help to solve the homeless problem? Government should find somewhere to put them because they are not living anywhere. And what, what are some of the things that happen to them while they're on the streets? Some of them are mad. Some of them need food, clothing and shelter. Some of them don't have anywhere to live. Well, what we, what the government, because you can't put everything down on the government still, but we have to try to help the government too. What we could do is get a place, get it clean out, get some people there who can get them bed, give them their meals three times a day and they have somewhere to sleep. The main reason why they're on the street is it's very obvious, they're homeless as they are so called. So we need to provide a facility that can house them with an indigent housing or whatever it may be. The infirmary is another option. A lot of persons are not aware of the infirmary. I know these persons are mentally challenged, but the infirmary is, or the poor relief department also assists the persons who are homeless. Feed them, that would be the most important thing, and see to it that they are right. But government can help them, but they're just neglectful not to, because they have the money what they can do it. But on the street is better for them, because then it won't cost them. Well, right now, the people them that is homeless, they need more shelter, more people to take care of them. They need better medication. They are not getting certain things that they, they need. They need food, clothing, somewhere where they can rest their head at night. And that, that is what locking Because from your a homeless or a disabled or something like that, they don't look on you because you there's nobody anymore. You have to be strong and who they can maybe, what you would call it now, get something from or have something to give them but from you are a disabled. They just walk, walk their foot on you. Well, they really have a hard time the because financial wise they need the support, you know. And some of them, you know, ungrateful to them family, you know, because some of them have some good family in society we can really help them. You understand? But even some people now, the children, they know how to take care of the children them. So in the long run now, they make it in life. So they don't look on them parents. Yes, yeah, so they need to get themselves straightened up back. I remember God in prayer, give them life to the Lord, because there's nothing can be God, right, sir? If you travel to Church House, the head office of the Anglican Church, which is situated in the Crossroads area of Kingston, on the second Friday of every month, you will find people coming from all over the corporate area, and some from as far as the parishes of St. Thomas and St. Catherine, to take advantage of the Anglican's impressive feeding program. The soup kitchen is run every other week here at the centre. We are people from any walks of life. Just come and we just hand them a cup of soup at one o'clock. We start. We go on. Sometimes we have up to 105 persons that we, we serve the soup. These persons are actually not working. They are what you call homeless. Some of them live in the gully. Some of them just sleep on the street. After we finish, for those who can come into the center, 
we serve them. For those who can't come, we go on the street and we serve them a meal. And they are thankful. We are from the Sabbath School and Lay Preachers, Lay Workers Federation. And this is our Labor Day project to, to feed the homeless breakfast. You are from Spanish Town? No, we are from different areas in St. Catherine. We have a number of projects. Each month we do a different project. So for this month we decided to focus on the homeless. These church people are not alone. The City Spirit in Montego Bay, the Salvation Army food programs, Food for the Poor, the Missionaries for the Poor, Church on the Rock and others are called givers by the street people and are held in high esteem. The Portland Rehab uh, Center uh, is a uh, facility which operates as a charity uh, which is entrusted by the Portland Parish Council, the local government, to deliver uh, a daycare program as well as provide night shelter uh, and meals and clothing and other elements of support to uh, persons who have been called street people. Uh, there are approximately 35 individuals who had uh, called the gutters or the, or the alleyways of Port Antonio their bedrooms and uh, Portland Rehab Center is housing about half of them and providing daycare to an additional four or five. So in a nutshell we provide food, clothing, shelter, uh, assistance with medical and psychiatric care and other services and friendship and support to some 20 uh, homeless uh, people of uh, Greater Port Antonio. Dr. Abel, Professor Rhodes and the street people themselves believe that more needs to be done. Mentally ill persons on the street could sometimes be at risk to others. You know, they may become violent, they may attack persons, but that's not a common occurrence. But, you know, I mean, every now and then you'll have reports of somebody probably throwing a stone, hurting somebody or hurt, I mean, destroying property and so on. So these are real concerns. And I think, you know, just having people who are filthy, people who probably sometimes are naked, um, just walking around the city. It really does not, it's, it's not a healthy situation. And it certainly takes away from the aesthetics of the environment. And, and, and therefore, I mean, it really is something that, that as a society we need to address. In the streets of Port Antonio, we had one woman who would walk around naked except for a dirty pair of underpants. In the middle of daytime, in the middle of town, walking in banks, throwing stones and sticks and screaming. You know, obviously psychotic, deranged, uh, filthy, naked. That shouldn't be. Sometimes um, the young people, them throw a stone on them, chop them up, because I saw a man without a sick port. He want to go to the public and there's no one there to send him to the pub, to camp to public for to get some attendance. So just on the street like that and he put his machine out. The woman, the woman will face a man approaching them at night. And this is why the centre do never re reject the woman. If they go to the station, they fear also being at the station. So we always, the police will carry them and that is the, the greatest gift. Once a policeman, in for the ones that often come to this center, once I see a lady out there, they take them here. And we just, just bed them down for the night. We don't ask no question, we just bed them down. And that to me is very good. Because when the man can rough it on the street, for me it's hard to see a lady sleeping on the street. Most of these women, you find that they are mentally challenged and this is why they are on the street. They are mentally challenged. Um, you just need to get to them. You just need to reach out. Once you are able to reach out to them, they will come because they see you as a caring person. Give them a room, so far build a one room and give each other them. Give a little, you know, to the street group them and help them because, uh, you know, for unfortunate circumstances, you know, yeah, you, remember, you may not know what will, you know, will happen in the future. 
If you have been moved by images you have seen in this documentary and would like to help, you can call Food for the Poor at 984-5005 or visit their website at foodforthepoor.org. You can also email them at contactjamaica at foodforthepoor.com.